All right, guys, and this one, I'm going to show you how I made some evil, spooky Mordor terrain, even though it's a week later than Halloween. But as they say, better late than never. However, a little bit of a twist in this one, I'm going to be joined by two other channels who are also making some evil terrain for some side projects. So we decided to just join together and make a little collab. We were going to do a little bit of a competition, but we realised I was just going to win anyway, so there was no point in even doing it. So I'll just pass you back to past us talking about our projects. Hello. 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 <laughs> okay, I am going with Mordor terrain because I think Mordor is the evilest of all the all the places. So that's why I'm doing Mordor. Even going to do a wee diorama for Mr. Sauron, Mount Doom, or a Druin, if you will. <laughs> Following on from my last video, I'm continuing with the Goblin Town theme. So, you know, I mean, for an no elite army him. like Goblin Town. Uh, you want to have a, a solid display board, so so that's kind of what I'm going for. What about you? What are you uh, doing, Joe? What's your plan of action? I decided to go, I don't know, I do a little bit different. I've done a couple bits and pieces of evil terrain here and there in the past. I wanted to just do something completely different, so I went for a, a Carnish terrain, so kind of a blank canvas, canvas so I can just sort of make, make it up. up. Nice. Yeah, it meant to look like that. It looks bad. Yeah, it meant to look like that. <laughs> I have decided right now. Yeah. Brilliant. So we've all got our, we've all got our challenge. Let's go. Yeah. Shot. Shot. Hand transition. Hand transition. <laughs> all at once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first things fourth. I went and bought a bunch of these MDF round bases. I believe I got these from Etsy a while ago. Getting them pre-cut is a bit more expensive than normal, however I think it's a great investment for the time save. They're also extremely durable and won't warp as easy. You can see here that I have made terrain in the past using just pink foam. These desert pieces of terrain here are literally just built from some pink foam. Anyway, the edges as you can see here are a little bit rough from the cutting, so I am going to go out in my garden and give them a nice little sand. This will just round off all the edges making them nice and smooth. As you can see here, they are looking nice and smooth. You don't need to sand them, but I think it gives them a much nicer finish. Now I've got four of these kind of oblong shaped ones that I'm going to cover in rocks. To do this, I'm using the cork I got from Gapes, Gate Gaming Scenic, Geek Gaming Scenics. All we're doing is taking some super glue and sticking these to the base and or each other. I've gone for a much more gelatinous super glue to help stick them together. I think the thinner one would just evaporate too fast before giving a solid bond. Another advantage to the jelly super glue is it gives you a bit more working time, which you kind of need when you're making terrain. And that's them for done. I've done a couple with the big giant rocks down the middle, and I've done one in the far right that has a gap in the middle, letting guys walk through. Just be careful not to spill it all over the floor. <laughs> now I'm just going to pass you over to Pass John, and as you can see that I did this project way back in summer, and I'm only just getting around to edit it now. Right, I am um, going to start work on here. It's absolutely roasting and it's September in Scotland. It's like 30 degrees. What the f*** is going on? Um, so my plan is to do this more terrain now because it's going to be roasting and it will dry really fast. Uh, so there is actually one advantage to having this level of heat is that I could make terrain faster than I normally would. So. Can't even do a thumbs up, it's that hot. So here is a list of all the ingredients you're going to need. Some basing sand, some PVA glue, and some black acrylic paint. You're also going to need a Tupperware and a brush to mix it with, and perhaps a little bit of water. You can see I'm going for a kind of medium coarse type look. You can go as fine or as coarse as you wish. The reason I've gone with this is just to create that kind of dried out old lava type effect like the terrain is at the bottom of a volcano and it's all nice and dried up. So in a 1 to 1 1 ratio, I mix black paint, PVA glue and the sand here. As you can see, I did a fantastic job of getting this in shot. But luckily, past John realised that I'd made a mistake here and managed to get a nice wee shot. Thank God for that. If you're finding it hard to mix, all you do is add a little bit of water and keep stirring it until you get this nice gloopy, almost porridge-like consistency. Now, before I put the paste down, I want to give all the cork and the MDF a base coat. 
I give it a quick spray of some really cheap black undercoat as I try not to use my good spray on terrain. I'm also going to spray up two of the rounder bases that I'm going to make lava terrain on. Obviously you should probably use protection when you're spray painting. I'm not sure how, but I have managed to spray paint my belly. I also managed to get a little bit of paint on the table there. Don't tell the missus. Oh. You're called a black paint on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> now, all we're doing is splatting this black mixture onto the base. It can be a bit tricky, especially if it's coarse. So just blob it on and let it kind of settle itself. Also, if you get this into the nice and crankies, the nice and crankies. <sighs> Also, if you get this into the nooks and crannies, it will give a stronger bond for the cork to the base. You must always keep durability in mind when making wargaming terrain, as it is going to get battered about over the years. And that's all there is to it. As you can see here, they are now all finished. I've added a few little bits of cork to the lava pools, just to give it a bit of height and a bit of interest. Once the gloopy mixture has dried, I will give it a spray paint of black. I ended up leaving these for a full day to dry, even though it was hot, I wanted to make sure it was absolutely rock solid before I started with the next step, as if you start to dry brush when it's still wet, you're going to absolutely destroy it, so it's better to be safe than sorry. Now the next step is probably the simplest, we're just going to give the whole thing a dry brush of storm vermin fur. You can use any grey you want, but this is just the one that I have handy, and then slowly add some white into the storm vermin fur, and I keep highlighting it up adding a progressively lighter and lighter dry brush. Super, super duper simple. I highly recommend picking up a bunch of big makeup brushes from Amazon if you're going to do big bits of terrain. It was an absolute game changer for myself. Right, because I am a complete pie and I painted all the lava without filming it, because I'm an idiot and I just got carried away, what I'm gonna do is I'll just do the effect on the base to show you how to do it. It's really simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do the effect just on a simple base, it's really easy. I'm sure you'll be able to do it. So let's get to it, shall we? Right, so I like to get all the different colors I'm going to use out and ready for this as we're going to be doing a bit of wet blending. You can use a wet palette if you want, but I still think they're a waste of time. <coughs> Basically what we do is we start from the deepest, darkest red and then slowly smush the progressively lighter and lighter colors into the base, as you can see I'm doing here. As long as the paint stays wet and you can smush them in together, it will blend up to a really nice looking lava effect. We then cover the whole thing with Mortient Earth Technical Paint. This will give the excellent black crackly finish to the top so it looks kind of like crusted lava. As you can see I'm putting it around the side of all the lava pools. I did originally leave the centre uncovered. But after talking with the commissioner and thinking about it, we decided to cover the whole pool as you can see in the final product here. I think covering the full pool was actually the right call. I think it looks a lot better with the full crusted top than with a little bit part doing because it doesn't blend together that well. Maybe if you were good at OSL effects, it would be good to leave the lava open and have some kind of bright light emanating from it. But unfortunately I don't have an airbrush, so I think it would be quite hard for me to get some really good looking OSL. Then I felt the pure black was nice, but it did need a little bit of colour to break up the base. So I've gone with these kind of brown and yellow blasted heath kind of dark dying grass tufts. I've even gone for some kind of little yellowy bushes. I put the bigger ones uh, where the rocks meet the ground as that's where the moisture would accumulate from any rain that Mordor gets. Then the smaller tufts out in the open where it would less likely to get rain. Vegetation will always find a way to grow pretty much anywhere. Just ask the weeds in my garden. You can see it in the real world there are kind of blasted heathery tufts around volcanoes which I'm trying to emulate here. This definitely helps the base and gives it a bit more vibrancy and it isn't just one colour, which I think really makes it stand out a lot more. So with that, the lava pools and the rocks are done. However, when I put them out on a 4x4, I felt we were missing two extra pieces. So I decided to go with a bigger, rockier mound, which was made in the exact same way as the previous ones. And for something a little bit different, I wanted to do an orc camp as I picked up some cool STL files from a Kickstarter I'd done. 
I then proceeded to paint up the orc cannon. And just as I was getting into editing this, I have noticed that the footage for the tent has unfortunately been corrupted. I am a complete pie, I do apologise, but I can't be arsed re-editing this, but I'll talk you through it. It's just Abaddon Black, and I just copied some orc freehand banner that I found online before giving it an Agrax Earthshade wash. And if you're wondering how I do flames, I will link my Balrog video at the end of this one where you can see how I've done them. But I think you can agree that the overall final result for the camp is fantastic. I really love this piece. I think I'm going to have to do a few more for myself. So with all the scatter pieces done, it was time to work on the main piece. The client had asked me to try and replicate this picture here. Something relating to the opening of Orodruin or Mount Doom or even Amon Amarath depending on which flavour of Elvish you're speaking. So, I've done the kind of basic kind of footsteps up to Mount Doom. I'll show you what I've done just now. Basically, I just got all these different bits of foam and kind of layered them up like stairs. I do want them to be quite flat. I know it's not flat really in reality, but I kind of wanted to be like a flat winding path just so that models can actually go on it and fight on it because at the end of the day, it's a gaming bit of terrain. I know it's going to be at the side of the board and like scenic, but I also want it to be playable if people want to fight over it. So the next step is to kind of have a, a good look at the entrance on the film. So I've got this screenshot here and you can quite easily see that there's this kind of peak triangle bit sticking out and I kind of want to have that sticking there. So what I've done here is I've got this and I'm going to cut that out like a peak. So we've got that overlooking the, the valley below. So that is the first part of this done. We've got the basic structure down along with the cork and all the nice rocks on the floor. This is quite a serious join that I want to last so I'm going to leave it to dry for a long time. I will leave it outside in the sun to let it dry off. Do watch out for feral creatures trying to destroy all your work though. Bucky! You fucking drop it. Can't have you destroying any more terrain mate. So for the next stage I'm going to have to cast up a ton of plaster of Paris moulds. These will be for the cliffs behind the door opening. You add the plaster of Paris to the water until you get a quite a thick consistency. This means that it will dry absolutely rock solid. If you'll pardon the pun. Oh. There's no pun there. 
I do have another tutorial on how to do these properly. Um, I'll link my display board tutorial at the end of this video as well. We then take all the rocks and peel them out of the moulds and remove any of the flash at the side. I then seal up the join between the two axes with some sculptor mould. So to make the kind of gate at the door, the nice kind of peaked tower, I've gone with these big kind of bits of plastic card. I've just kind of stuck them into the random shape, digging it into the polystyrene and then building the rocks up around it using a mixture of hot glue, filler and sculptor mold to stick the rocks to the floor. I then realised it would be easier if I put lay this on its back and stuck all the rocks on it. Sculptor mold and filler is used to blend all the little imperfections between the rocks. Right, so that's this bad boy painted. Uh, all the rocks and all the ground are done. I am going to go with a wee, a wee leopard spot technique uh, for the for the rocks because it's plaster and sculptor mold, and that just absorbs it, and it looks much better than just painting it. Sometimes foreshadowing is relatively odd, but if that doesn't work, I'll just paint it normally. Uh, I'm not so sure what I'm going to do about these yet. I'll maybe wait till I've done the leopard spot technique and come and do these last. I might make them like silvery metal, like evil, evil metal. Maybe black with like edge highlight of silver. You know, some kind of some evil metal. Ugh. Bye, let's get cracking. Several months later. So, the leopard spot actually didn't really look that great. Um, Normally, I'll always use a leopard spot technique, but it, with the dark rock, dark black rock at the bottom, it just didn't tie in that well. It just didn't look like Mount Doom. It looked a bit too bright, and there was lots of big white spots and stuff, which is alright for normal rocks, but I just didn't think it felt evil enough. So I've basically just gone and spray painted the whole thing black, and we're going to go with the age old Mr. Dry Brush. Um, I'm going to start with a a wee lighter one, um, going to kind of kind of heavier dry brush, an over brush if you want to get to it, uh, and then we're going to just put in some white into the grey and just do a, neat, a really light dry brush just to pick out all the finest detail, and then we're going to tough the cut and hopefully it looks class. After the amount of work I put into this, if it looks like shite, um, I'll probably just go for a, a cry, a cry wank. Um, yeah. So just dry brush the f and I'll get back to you. Surely, surely you know what dry brushing is. So I don't really need to do any more for this montage because by this point in time, if you don't know what a dry brush is, just a, a quick point here. I have to do all the boring bits, like painting the back black, just so that it kind of all ties together. It is the boring bit. I really want to start tufting this and getting it all finished and have all the wee final details. 
But we need to, you need to do the boring bits, sadly. Paint there and in black. Yay! But, you know, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. The missus will be happy when this is finished as well because she'll get her kitchen back because I've mount doomed my kitchen. Hopefully I get this done today. A few moments later. So I've just gone and tufted it all up the same way as the other boards. Added a few in the kind of, some of the cliff faces just to break it up because it looks was very kind of monotonous if you don't have these tufts but you know that's us almost done I think the only couple of things I want to do is fix some of the mistakes that I've made this this piece has taken probably as long as all the others combined if not double you just like it so far I've got a couple of touch-ups to do fix some of the bits and bobs and then it's done enjoyed this build guys. I hope it was helpful enough that you'd be able to make some more door terrain for yourself if you so wished. And of course a huge thank you to everyone that supports the channel either through watching or by supporting the Patreon. I can't thank my Patreons enough, it really does mean the world to me. I love you so much. Oh and just a quick note, if you want to see this board in person it will be at the Scouring of Stirlingshire this year. It was one of the best tournaments I attended last year. There is a vlog on it if you are interested. Unfortunately, it is sold out, but you can get yourself on the reserve list just in case some tickets come up. I would highly recommend that you do. And don't forget to go see Windrush and 3D Games' Evil Terrain. They have done some incredible work. I'll put a link in the description for that. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And Remember to give my bell a good old ring. Solved. Unlike the mysterious shot from Stirlingshire, who poured that shot on me? Still no idea to this day how that shot appeared on my shoulder. Just madness. Just... Go watch the Stirling vlog, see if you can figure it out. Absolute wizardry. Oh, it's a police helicopter. Somebody's escaped. I'm in the garage. Ah, there's a sculptor mold. Fuck, I knew I left it somewhere.
<laughs> well, I'm glad that you've really thought this one through, John, and have come with a, a you know, a word. Well, I thought the whole point type. was we were going to have a call to discuss it, and then we never did. <laughs> oh, oh, it's the pre call, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we could do the, um, we could have like an end shot where you multi-screen all three yeah. terrains and so, say, yeah, comment. Yeah, did we even find <laughs> <laughs> I swear you're just hunting the outtakes at this point. Yeah, you're just going to be in the end reel now. Yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone. If you watch to the end... I think I broke my, my wire for my speaker. That's my brand new speaker broke. All right, make sure to um, subscribe to 3D Games. Don't worry about yeah. that part over there. <laughs> and we rush. Thanks. Not that one. <laughs>